Mailbag Preview Show, episode 271. Uh, joined today by Rob Scurry and Jack Dickens. No Benny said today. Uh, he sends his apologies. Rob, how you going? Good week last uh, weekend at, uh, was it Ramwick last week? Yeah, mate. We had the old man on track. Great day. Um, you just destroyed the first race mm. and stripped yesterday at Kenzo. So luckily for the viewer, otherwise I'd be totally insufferable. Um, <laughs> but looking forward to getting out to Rose Hill for Missile Stakes Day. It was beautiful to get little J Mac Waller, those owners, and that horse, and then get twelve bucks. Fourteen, fifteen dollars, yeah, six dollars at the eight hundred. Um, I think they're both horses going going places. Um, yeah, the million good. dollar for the battlers. Exactly. I am yeah. invincible thing, whatever it's called. It starts with a C. The um the Ma Eustace one looked pretty promising, looked like it was gonna come back as well. Estrella. Yeah. Estrella, yeah. Good horse. And the third one's not too bad. It's got improvement mm. to come. So I think that's that's a race. Um yeah. Sort of put in your black book area, as you're saying. Well, we've got we've got it'll might be up might be up against the big boy militarized and whatever from the two year old season next week in the uh I think it's run to the rose and the rosebud um before the golden rose. Beautiful. And Jack, big day yesterday. Just, just um, one of the more rewarding um, days of uh, my racing life, John, and mm-hmm. I believe probably I'd assume yours too, and Rob's. Um, it's like when you have a really, really proper bet, you don't actually enjoy any of it. It's just pure and utter relief when it wins. You know, yeah. you don't roar at home. You just pray to God that it holds on and wins. And that's uh, that's what it was like yesterday. She's now two from two. Um, at sale, yeah. At sale, we love sale. <laughs> Melbourne, Bloodstock, and sale. We should race every horse we own at sale. Um, our ROI at sale must be through the roof. Um, and I think we'll we'll find out in time. But I reckon it was another fast run race, and it'll be a good number, and it'll hold her in good stead uh, for her next step up in grade. Um, she's a bonny little mare, mate, and I really needed it yesterday after the strip I had. And then Pistol mm. chimed in for the first time in months with a thing that she could have won by 30, big parade style, one mm. by six at nine dollars. But turned my whole day around, you know, it was a bit of late Pistol action again to, um, you know, just like all of a sudden, oh, today's not so bad. Yeah, it was a little bit like that yesterday. The prices that I provide now, um, I, I marked a horse 401 dollars and it won. So that was a fucking grim start to my sale betting, but um, finished strongly. And uh, I think that Peter Moody horse that won maybe race six is way above average and will be better the further it gets. I don't think it had any favours in run at all and just sort of that's did the, the thing, job. That's the gone. thing Nolan, Nolan rode. Nolan rode it and they she um, yep. now co-trainer. Such a punish in the form guides for all these trainers. One day it's gonna, it's gonna, your whole screen on your computer is gonna be the trainer's name, all seventeen of them, you know. Um, yeah, she she gave him a bit of a whack, little Luke, but um, he sort of gave it back. I think our horse is good. I think it was a nice meeting on uh, yesterday at sale, which it didn't want to be as a Wednesday meeting, but um, yeah, certainly very very rewarding day with face of jury, John. Um, it's a bloody rewarding business when we get it right, isn't it? Indeed it is. And we're into the well, we're into the new season already, but the first Saturday of the new season. Um, and obviously a lot of the good horses are coming back, which makes it very exciting. I suppose actually on a serious note, we should we should like genuinely pay credit to a genuine full credit and a thanks to Gavin Bedgegood and his team for the job they have done with that Philly. Um, maybe mayor now. Um five year old. Very, very grateful for what they have done. Um, the patience they showed and the the skill they showed to to get her to the races and racing the way she is, um, incredibly grateful and and fitting that we got him off to his first winner for the new season. And what I'm tipping and I'm hoping is going to be a massive year for Bedge Good Racing. Beautiful. All right, shall we head to Rose Hill? Rob, Ooh. you like? Uh, we'll start with race six. You like something there? I see you've just uh, sent it out to the subs. Yep. Oh, I love this um, bit of early gear. It's, it, well, the last two of these have shortened and sort of 
provided me with a bit of a, a head mind mind fuck um, <laughs> for the Saturday. So I thought, well, this is the thing that like we had Kalino, we had the thing like went like a busted banana queen or whatever last week. But so this one, so am I. Um, I it's coming out of kind of a weakish race, and I think the market sort of picked that up, and that's why it's eight dollars. But it's one two on the bounce. It's parading outstanding it was I, it couldn't win on the map last last week uh with zach lloyd zach zach sticks who's you know winning about you know two city races every every time he goes around it's, it's eight dollars it's getting a better map than it had last last start um the biggest danger in the race i think is water goes which i think saw my maps better than it um and then there's Regal Palm first up for Nisham, which, you know, there should be good speed here, which is going to suit it. It's going slightly up in distance. And, yeah, just just think it's just like bet, bet, bet. Um, buy so you think, John. Oh, that'll be right. Rails in the true, Randwe, uh, Royce Hill. What are you anticipating? Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be kind of hard to make ground. That's probably another reason why the source is $8 and, you know, it might get $10. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think they'll race fast times. The other horse in the race, King of Naples, we had a good win on last start at Randwick. The old man, he was very confident. Um, me, not so much with John O'Shea. Um, anyway, it, I thought that just fell in to win last week, and it's three dollars. So it's another reason to to bet this horse. Um, I think it's good. There's good speed here over thirteen fifty, and this is going to be strong late. Zach Lloyd knocked well, him down. Already <laughs> decent form, Rob. Out of its last start. Sorry. It's last start 12 days ago. Some of the back markers, Richard and Will Freeman train horses, like come out and run second, but improved its benchmark figure dramatically. Electrica. And I saw, you know, Forrester, this one, the midway last week. Kath topped the row. Oh, God, how we weren't on this for the service. But, you know, it was 40 to 1 and just held on in an eight way go last week. I think that that horse is, you know, hot linked up in this horse's form anyway um yeah he's a nice looker too and I, I think i think he's flying he used to race in sort of listed listed level seven-year-old least life um zach lloyd young man very confident i think i think he'll be busting through a pack and 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 looking the winners or being unlucky held up beautiful beauty and uh should we pop into race seven jack you wanted to have a little look Horse named Legio Ten. Uh, Legio Ten, big win of Bendigo on the f- first up this prep. Then it came to town and absolutely caved in price and pissed in. Uh, beat Midtown Boss, who I have an opinion of. Um, then it went to Flemington and it was just beaten. I think by the track pattern, it came through the same race as Course for Concern. They met again and it started two sixty versus Course for Concern that day and Course for Concern with Ollie. Uh, was able to to get the job done just um, beaten half a length. Um, cause for concern goes around five dollars at the moment in a group race that I can't remember the name of at Flemington. We'll probably talk about it in a little bit. Um, whereas this this fella, this this gelding rod by Exosphere had a Viennese uh, who loses Celine Gordray and cops uh, James McDonald goes around at a pretty juicy sort of price in a. What are we talking, baby? Uh, benchmark seven, seven eight. Seventy eight is uh, where a lot of good horses can come out of. Um, going to be really good speed here with Brudenell. is a really fast horse. Just got beaten last start. Um, maybe prefer a bit more of a juice out of the track for Brudenell, uh, and it's got to be a little bit suspect at the end of twelve hundred. Um, I was on Noble Conqueror the last start. Um, it was so weak, so so weak. Um, so yeah, mate. Look, it, it's looking. I can't, you know, you got Anthony Cummings there. Um, Tristate, I'll have to look at it. It's, um, it's got Jay Collard on it, so maybe Anthony. Oh, obviously, obviously his... I'm only just just glimpsing this stuff, Rob. You know, I'm not trying to tell you yeah. what to do, but I just look at it. Time to boogies in the market, it wants to go forward. So is Brudenell. So I anticipate, like, you know, some type of tempo to give oh, Leslie sure. a 10. You know, no, no, they're, they're, right they're going to go. They're going to go super quick here. Brudenell is is a thousand meter, eleven hundred meter horse. I don't know why it's running over twelve hundred. Um, anyway, here it is. Hugh, Hugh and X Godolphin could be a, could be a odd. To, you know, maybe it's only a Wednesday horse, but um, he sh- he should get to run on off a good speed. Beautiful. Where are we going next, John? 
Uh, we'll stay at Rose Hill for the feature there, get Rob's uh, little word on the Missile Stakes Group 2, 1,200 metre. Uh, obviously, well, uh, I think Big Parade was favourite. Uh, yep, um, off a massive trial win. Uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? About 20 lengths or 21 lengths, to be exact. Rob, also, you... wasn't it a couple of years ago since he's been to the races, Rob? No, no, no. He's, he's, he's been racing for Mark Newnham now with um, Joe Pride. Um, but he's he, been to the races, though, for 475 days he hasn't he hasn't been for that long mm. mounting our male the male bag to condor to you eyes on ponies rob scurry you need to get it if you want to bend to the missile stakes without it good luck to you you're a braver person than i am because this horse wins a trial by 21 lengths everyone's got a bit of lead in the pencil but it might parade six, extremely six extremely furry big and hairy oh, no, joe pride right. the great recycler of pony um we know he can do a job rob Sorry, three yeah. times this time. Look, it's gone from Newnham to, to um, Pride. It's, I hate to say it, but I think it's an upgrade. I, lo- I do love Mark Newnham himself in Hong Kong, but I think I think Joe Pride's the boutique trainer in Sydney um, with a stable full of, well, two of the most exciting horses in the country. Um, anyway, uh, here I've got, I think Golden Miles a fourteen hundred metre horse. I think that's a chance. I think the other the other Godolphin horse ingratiating, um, that 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 can do something too. Dragonstone, um, but it's just can't. S- and then they've got I M E, which is a, a good good speed horse. Could could be Broad too quick well. for them. Well, that's that's interesting. You've got the two favourites who are going to kind of cut each other over twelve hundred. We don't know if Big Parade's going to enjoy, you know. I still have the desire to 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 win, you know. Like this one thing, winning a trial by thirty lengths, going at ninety five percent and looking super, but then to go at a hundred percent and you know when the chips are down with the iron meter to want to keep going at age years, I'm not I'm not sure. So I think I think the uh, two good often horses are some sort of shot uh, to get the right sit and, and Dragonstone might be there as well. Rockney by needs it a bit softer, I'd say. I thought that Argentia first up for Joe Pride, the great recycler of the pony. Um, Anthony and Sam Friedman to Joe Pride, two trials often in Melbourne did its best work fresh early in a prep I'm very very keen to see what you say of this horse from the yard I, I, I... Okay, draw, drawn, in. drawn in so is Golden Mile so yeah look I've never seen it it's a filly isn't it yeah man now by Frankel <laughs> um, exciting stuff it did look that should be it should be a good race, you know. Golden Mile, J J Mac drawn drawn low. I'm not sure if, if the the low barriers are going to be a huge huge help, especially if you're, you know, behind behind looking to you know come off the fence and get a run through. Anyway, we'll find out Saturday. Beauty. That'll do it for Rose Hill. We'll move across to Flemington. Where did you want to start there, Jack? Um. I did the quality logs this morning. I just do them again. Sure. Race um, seven. The f- race seven is the Ori Star. Ori's Star. Um, I reckon Sosie Bond won this race once. Not sure though. It might have been returned to gelding off the botting incidents and won this race from worse in midfield. I was with Josh, Ross, yeah. and Peter in the P and O ship cruise that is the VRC member stand and it was one of the great fill ups of all time, if that's the case. I might just be making that up. No, no, you're, you're right. It, it dead set got us back. We were in a we were in a funk, which would make total sense, Rob. We we're in yeah. like the winter's funk in Melbourne. Funds it were just like just sitting there. No growth. No wages <laughs> coming out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it was a glorious thirty day. thirty dollars. Well. You'd had a crack you'd had a big crack at something earlier in the day and, and done your balls. Yeah, it just looked like I remember watching it. It just looked like every other horse was glued to the ground, and it was just. It was. Remember, everyone used to say that 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 was a a non you know not non trier. Yeah, because he was trying to bite horses, and (laughs) he's still going around. So he won the champion. Yeah, what a horse! So is he? Rob loves him. You know why? It's by so you think. Yeah, bit. Tom Melbourne got a tough rap too. He was a good horse, but. Oh, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't a cat, just, just badly placed, maybe. Or not, you know, just well, good horse. But hope Uncle Chris kept... isn't listening. I don't know. I haven't spoken to Chris in a while. 
<laughs> we wouldn't fear. Um, anyway, the Ori Star guys, rails at 10 metres on Saturday, which I think will lean to rails in run not suited slightly, which is unique normally at Flemington. Uh, down the straight, want to focus on horses that are forward and midfield. I found this race uh, reasonably difficult to sort of uh, stamp with a bet. Um, the key runners here, I think you can sort of ignore it to an extent much, much better and dance to Jabai, who won, but at a huge SP last start, I think it would improve back to a bend, but they've gone down the straight because it won down the straight last start. Um, I, I sort of expect it to put in a bit of a stinker. Mr. Exclusive here to shock. Both drawn inside, both out of their grade. I think they'll struggle. Uh, here to shock, probably get back, hit the line, put in your black book, wait for a race in three weeks, and then six weeks, probably this track up and trip. Uh, chassis, if God exists, and he might actually after yesterday afternoon, but he wouldn't know what they're going to do with this horse tactically, and I don't have a clue. Uh, course for concerns, the interesting horse here, it's flying. Um, I don't know why anyone, someone in our chat group asked Benny, I said, for a tip for Saturday because he couldn't come on the show. You don't need to ask him. It's this horse. This is what it'd be on. He's obsessed with this thing. Um, it'll settle worse in midfield, I think. It loses D. Oliver, gets Craig Williams. I reckon that's because of the weight. Ollie couldn't probably get down to this weight. Um, if it's drawn barrier eight, uh, it's a big player here. And no doubt Craig would probably get out there anyway because he's the deepest thinker and the greatest human being that racing has at the moment. But that's a gamble. I don't want to take at that price. I think the key players here from a betting point of view are Zethus, It's Our Time, and to a lesser extent, General Bow. From that barrier, Blake Shin will be positive, I think, on Zethus, and he'll be there or thereabouts, sort of second, third pair running line, and I think It's Our Time will tag him. Mickey D jumps on It's Our Time. I think they're the two at the prices that represent value. Uh, General Bow is a fair price and will be an under, I'd say, for the prices I send out. And for the um, people, the, the the couple of people on Twitter that don't seem to understand how prices work, if I have a horse shorter than the market, I'd bet on it. If I have a horse shorter, longer than the market, I would lay it. It's really quite simple. Um, yeah, so working around Zethus and it's our time as potential bets, but not a race I want to get really, really stuck into. Any questions or comments, you two? I was just going to say, Roy, Mate. much, much better. Can you comment? Good. Yeah, good, good world of horse. You know, just about just tried to hold off Galino the other day um, down the straight. Who knows? But, you know, he's a brave, proper Sydney, good Saturday horse. So what's he running in the Ori Star? Is, is, is it a set weights with penalties or weight for age? Uh, handicap. Handicap. All right. So what's he, what's he got? 54. Sorry, I'm going to get it. Robbie, get out, get open your puntingformula.com.au, the world's number one racing database that I use, you use. Um, you use it without knowing you use it. Rob's, Rob's so good at our joint that he doesn't have to prepare his own shit. It gets sent to him, like on a plate, like our superstar full forward. Doesn't have to train, just shows up. Well, all your shoulders will tie your boots. Get out there and just do your thing, baby. Yeah, That's well, what I do with Robbie. But, um, yeah, well, yesterday, minus eight. Kenzo might be bad for good. Your horse has 54 kilos there. John McNeil rides for Sarah Ryan. Is that how you say that's Sarah? Because it's that's Sarah. Either yes, or Sarah Ryan. It Sarah, depends where she's from. If she's from England. Or... We had an exchange student stay with us called Sarah, young girl. Anyway, um, Sarah <laughs> did, run fourth, did run fourth in the expressway uh, in January, group two. Yeah, proper horse. Fourth behind yeah, Jeremy. Big, but, big uh, strong uh, grey. To, to get serious again for a second, I'm happy to get my pants pulled down and spanked by horses that haven't seen the straight in good races. Yeah, you know, that's, it's our well, times, the, the the track and trip pony in that race and the, the one I want to be with. Um, you know, if I look at these prices and just update them with the scratching of ingratiating, so it is headed to Sydney for sure. It was in this race. You know, like it's our time at 450 versus much, much better at $8. Like it's our time, I think, is going better than that horse off its ratings recent and I know it just it's got a massive horn it. for the for the straight. Hey, Absolutely. Much, much better might end up being one of the great frothers of all time on the straight track. We don't know. Mm. But until I see it, I'm not going to bet upon it. Um that's how I'm playing that race. But d- but don't you say that they generally go a bit slow up the straight for the class? Yeah. And often Yeah. Well it should get it, you know, you should be leading in Get every chance to kick without, you know, be dropping a few kilos. Um, was Zephyr's running in Sydney a little bit disappointing last start? I think we were on it at Rose Hill. 
I'll keep clicking off the race and then you'll ask me the question. It's, it's a good like... it's a good dolphin horse, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah behind this... Omni Man. Yeah, I think we're on it. Started we're five dollars behind Omni Man. Um Zach Lloyd off, Blake Shin, who's incredibly in form on. It was eased at the start, last start. Um the start prior, it started nine fifty behind Monometh. So it it started it started um the reason I like it a little bit at the prices is it started like double the price of um it's our time. So whereas Dance of Jabai started fifty. So if you look at it now, uh it's our time four fifty, Zethus thirteen dollars. So for a bit of travel, a jockey upgrade, I'm getting a better price at versus each other. So I think they're the two. Um tell you another thing about that horse. Mm-hmm. Be- beat home affairs. Cost what, a beast, me what a beast that horse was. First though. start, home affairs in it had in a race. I, I was on it. It was got to a dollar three in run. This thing ran it down. It was one of the that's one of the greatest looking horses of all time. Would you agree? Yeah, it was hundred grand to serve at Coolmore. One of the best best looking three year olds for sure. Mm. Be interesting okay. happens there. All right. Um race eight. Funny you mentioned I'm trying to buy one back from someone that's just like in four years after they pay six hundred for it as sale. Funny you Sorry, John. Been, um, been ask, asking Vinny what his best bet would be. Um, he's actually not come back with cause for concern. Uh, he's come back with Braden Star, which is in race eight. So, <laughs> and then he read the chat more. For concern, but... Oh, so. well, there you go. You got you got a double out of us, guys. Um, <laughs> righto, this race. I think decent speed. King Cova, Senior, Sino Uno, Wild Imagination, Aaron Bay, Hennessy Lad want to roll. French Emperor should. Don't know if it will. Didn't last time. First mate could. Presser, Conqueror midfield. Uh, seriously, as on Deep Strike, Vitruvius and Braden Star worse than midfield. I think we can skip through this pretty quick then because I think Braden Star is one of the easiest bets of all time. What? It's just. That simple. Just, just it's a big, big bet. Perfectly suited to Flemington. Perfect distance. I uh, just love it here. I love it here a lot. There's good speed, but not too much speed. It's SPs hold up. It's also the upside. I don't think we've seen it near its top yet. Um, Ollie's the perfect rider for this horse from this barrier with rails and run not suited. He'll be three wide blending before you know it. The old corner, you'll have so much pony. It's not funny. Um, Great bet, Braden Star. I am with Benny. I said, Rob, you Benny. might have been on holiday where you when that was in at Rose Hill. Does it ring a bell, Braden Star for Busted and Young? No idea, never heard of it. So yeah, I think I was I was I was traveling about. Oh, that's all good. And there's a I see um, Kiwi horse and there's Senior Uno that Woodamu Pin used to ride in New Zealand. Um, it's gone from Billy, his- our man. We love him. Exactly. His master in uh, New Zealand to his master here. So a little bit of sort of background chat there, getting that horse over there by the looks. Ah, interesting, interesting. Anyway. Cool to the boys. Exactly. Uh, race nine, Jack, is... Great race. That's what it is. It's a great there. race. Um, good speed. Poland, Mascot, Ulysses, Carla, Tijuana, Edison. Regards, Marie. Interestingly placed. Barrier one probably kills it here, but if it if it is rails and run on Saturday, which I doubt it is, but if it is, make sure you have something on regards, Marie. Nice speed. The wallet number, but is it a number? Tycoonist. Very, very good last start. If you like it, you can justify having a bet on it. We talk about that you know, a lot over the years on this show. I remember with the great Mark Sheen, we used to say, like, we're just basically, you know, creating a narrative to support the bet we want to have. You could find a narrative to support backing Tycoonus. It's got SPs versus nice horses. It was very good last start. It's going super. Um, I, I think the two horses to back here are Poland, particularly if it's been favoring the on-pace horses. I'd lean more to it. But the, the bet I really, really want to have is for D. Oliver to ride a race to race double on Nicoli Vito. Perfect barrier, perfect track, uh, getting through its gears nicely. I love what it did um, first and second up in context. It was like disappointing potentially to the market, but it's a horse that's like got good ability and did sort of nothing wrong. The market 
didn't didn't like steam the horse like because he's they, they the market could have steamed this horse because he's a really well placed horse in these sort of races he's been in, but they just sort of said not yet. But we've got to respect him. I reckon he'll he'll crunch on Saturday. He'll be a complete Cleveland steamer and he'll be very very hard to beat. He's each way odds and you can have a really good bet and you can enjoy it. You'll have a stack of pony on the corner, and it's not the sort of price range where it's relief when it wins. It's just going to be pure joy. There's something here. There's maybe a good horse here in the race though that should have won first up shout out to our man Lindsay uh the the dog groomer Barkley Square um always looked like it would be a better horse as an older horse and Lin- um, Lindsay did give me the text um whenever he woke up yesterday Berkeley Square's in yeah <laughs> he's got a bit of Rob Scurry about him yeah, yeah good good <laughs> it's a, it, you know maybe it's a it's a proper 2000 meter horse first up over 1400 and it, it's not going to be suited but if it is a if it's a proper horse, developing horse, he can win at Flemington. Um, it's got a good good jock on to do it. Seems to be drawn really well. What why do you love fourteen for you know over the fourteen hundred for Nicole Vito? Won't it just be what three to wide maybe with cover at best? Yeah, I think that's where you want to be on Saturday. Lane, get the wider lanes in the straight. Um that's just what I'm that's just how I'm reading it. Obviously, I'd adjust my position a little bit come race day because we're gonna have so much information on these new juicy ten race cards. Um, beat uh, Legio 10 on debut but Barkley Square I'm just saying that yeah oh, it's shit. a very very nice horse If like, again this is why it's a nice race and you're going to get a good price whatever you like if you want to back Barkley Square you can and you can comfortably justify it to yourself uh, mentally you can articulate it it's two from two this track and trip that's enough there it's SPs are sweet it's got form around all the right horses it's just a question of like how much intent is there going to be first up, but it's drawn where it doesn't have to show a stack of intent to lob in a spot. It's a phenomenal race. Yeah. Flying Mascot's a great horse. Forgive its first run. It was backed first up. It was probably a silly price. Mark Zara, like a hungry Mark Zara, gets on. The form out of that race is General Bow, Sweet Ride, and Grashouting. They've all gone on the races and gone really well and improved their numbers. Um, it's a great race. All right, race 10, the Jockey Celebration Day, benchmark 84 over 1,100. What did you make of Zach DeBoss? Uh, I know you were hot on it last start. It's got, a, it's got to like, it's got to give half a kilo to Benedetta. No, at level weights. And then Tatum Bull's riding Benedetta, so it's got to give three and a half to Benedetta. I don't think it could beat Benedetta if Benedetta gave it six and a half. I think Benedetta's a group horse. Um, the Lindsay stamped the trial. The only G, the only grey up is Tate and Ball, mid draw, potentially worse than midfield. Um, it's going to start extremely short. It's a very very exciting horse, Benedetta. Um, yeah. I think the the safest way to play, and if you are having a quarter, you cannot leave out Najim Sahail. Hail the great man. Um, this horse will settle forward in midfield and be very, very like it'll run a big race. Um, I'd probably rather have something on it each way if I had to have a bet in this race, but you never have to have a bet. Gamble responsibly, but um, yeah, they're the two I like in the last race, John, and I am running right out of gas. Right, all good. That's uh, then we'll make our way over to Kiwiland. Have a oh, tip yeah. this week. Um, Sit back, Rob. Enjoy a horse. You know, Man, I stop. Know. Wait, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's out of HD. What are the stats at? Because you are, I'd probably guess, number one seed right now at the mailbag. No win last week, unfortunately, you ran fourth. So, so might, you're two from four, but should be, be three from four. four. Yeah, something like that. Rob, you're one from two. Yeah, but at a big price. Oh, Benny yeah. said's probably doing a good job too. He's going I'm on probably on. coming last. Yeah. Fuck, that's depressing. Right. But you make um, the best narratives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, someone pay me for narrative, would you? Um a horse you definitely know, Jack. Not sure if you know Rob Dragon Leap for the O'Sullivan Scott. That was in Melbourne I, last preparation. I, I Jamie do Carr wrote it. it. It's a real flighty bugger. Is it? Is it in the light brown colours? Sort of. 
No, he's in the red and green, the autumn sun colours. Oh, proper silks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, he is um, coming back off a Queensland uh, winter campaign. Um, comes back to a little open handicap, 1,100 metre at Ruakaka on Saturday, race four. He, he has to carry the 62 kilos, gets Opie Bosson um, on board, which... You know, when Opie starts riding again, the good horses are coming back, which is which is good. Um, but yeah, Dragon Leap, 1100 Ruakaka. It was the same meeting last year that this horse, same race, sorry, that this horse ran second to Imperatriz, beaten 0.2 lengths. So um, yeah, sets up nicely. I think there's definitely no Imperatriz in this field. Main danger is a horse called Not Ideal. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. One what did it win? Six races in Hong Kong and now come back to New Zealand. But I think the 1100 far too short for it. Um, so I think Dragon Leap. And there was about $3.60 available. This is a horse that, you know, ran, what did it run? Fourth in the Memzi, um, ran second in the BRC Sprint, just been, um, it just ticks all the boxes. I think like 62 kilos is obviously a lot, but um, $3.60 for the class runner by a country mile. There's lots of speed up top. It'll be zooming over the top with the best jockey in New Zealand aboard. I love that. I love that a lot. Righto. That's pretty much it. So clarify our one standout bet each. Mine's Braden Star, Benny's Braden Star, Jono's Dragon Leap, and Rob, you are... So am I. So am I. That's the Mailbag preview show for this week. Um Get in touch if you want to race a horse with us. We find value. They win. Eventually, they win. We've got, uh, I'll just quickly touch on, we've got Atlantic Way running at the Gold Coast on Saturday and then Wolf Point running at either Dolby or Lismore on Monday. So we're, start, we're going to start to have a bit of action up in Queensland, aren't we, too? There's a couple of others that are close, I think. Yep. Strategic position, um, not far away, and Swiss Scandal. Also geez, not. he looks good, strategic position in the photos. Food of Roses, very nice jump out Monday morning. Um, Keats having a spell. Exodus probably going to race next Saturday. That's all I've got. Face the jury still going. She'll go to a she'll go to a, another midweek race potentially, slightly up in grade. Um, maybe even a Saturday race. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Got you. Eight grand. Eight thousand dollars. Indeed. Patience, mate. Cheapest thing in racing. Thanks, right. Bart. Cheers, fellas. Have a good weekend. Cheers. See you.